We live in an interesting time. It's a, it's a time like no other. I mean, it's a time that our grandparents couldn't even fathom. Have you ever seen these robots? Have you seen these, these guys? Boston Robotics is doing some amazing things with robotics. I mean, there's, it seems like there's nothing that these robots can't do. It's, it's amazing uh, the technological leaps that we've made in the world. Not only that, I'm, I'm sure that most of you have gotten really used to accessing the sum of all human knowledge using Alexa, Siri, or Google, uh, the artificial intelligences at our, at our fingertips these days. It's amazing what we can do. In fact, I was teaching a class um, about a couple of years ago, a uh, fifth grade class, and the young lady looked at me and she said, Mr. Williams, when you were little, did you have the internet? And I said, no. She said, how did you know how to do anything? You know, and it's the truth. I mean, these days we don't know how to do anything unless we YouTube it or unless we Google it. You know, and then, you know, to, just to show how, how fast things are, are moving, you know, a year ago, if you had asked if we could ever get a vaccine ready in just a few months, it would have been an impossibility. You know, they would say it take, it'd take seven years to get a vaccine up and running. And here we are uh, with a vaccine for COVID. And yet with all of these technological advances, and yet with all this ability and all this intellect and, and all these incredibly talented people, a baby still has to be born. It's animated by a, a force and in a way that we still can't figure out according to science. And then we die. It's kind of humbling, isn't it? For all this talent that we have, we still find ourselves at the mercy of nature. And also, you know, we live in a time where, you know, there's no problem that can't be solved by the end credits. You know, uh, if, if we could do what our television shows say we could do and what our movies said we could do, you know, there's nothing that would be impossible. You know, in a couple of hours, we could solve all of the world's problems. It would be no problem. But the truth of the matter is, is we can't do that. Especially in this time of COVID and, and all the battles that we've had in the last year. The stories of loss and the struggle it seems like it's a wake-up call. It, it seems like it's a coming back to reality that we're dust. We started off as dust, and we're going to end up as dust. But it's real easy to forget that we're dust, isn't it? You know, in this age of self-sufficiency, it's easy to, to, to get a hold of this delusion that we can believe in ourselves and if we believe in ourselves enough then we'll somehow conquer everything but there's a fateful day that we we started off as dust and then there will be another day who will end up as dust and we don't get to know when that is but we get caught up in a kind of delusion, a kind of self-sufficiency. And in this warped worldview, our values get skewed. And before we know it, we've, we've traded the truth for a lie. Ball games become more important than spiritual development. School becomes more important than a relationship with Jesus. Entertainment becomes more desirous than fellowship. Work is, ne is necessary and school's necessary but interaction with Christ, well, that's extraneous. And before you know it, our actions say shopping, food, sports, or something else is really where we find life and meaning. Before you know it, we're consumed by things that are just dust. And so what that leaves us is that we're dust looking for life and truth in dust kind of absurd isn't it but we pursue it so hard i want to share a scripture with you it's in proverbs and it's a short little scripture and and it's not one that you usually hear at this time of year but it says 
Buy the truth and do not sell it. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Well, now, I know that, that the majority of you have probably professed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Many of you have grown up in church, and, and, and you all know the Sunday school answer, don't you? That Jesus is the truth. And in fact, you know the scriptures. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You also probably know 10, 10, John 10, 10. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So our rhetoric says that Jesus is truth. Our rhetoric says that in Jesus we find life. But many times our lives say we're looking for love and life and truth in all the wrong places. I don't think anybody in the sound of my voice would disagree with the quotes from Jesus himself. That he's the truth, that he's the life. Then what does this passage in Proverbs have to do with any of this? Again, it says in, in Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and do not sell it. Now, l- let's go ahead and admit, there's nothing that you and I have that could buy Jesus. You know, even on our best day, we, we can't, the Bible says that we fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to buy Jesus, but, but it says we should buy the truth and sell it not. What would we use to buy the truth with? Well, let's look at the word buy. The word buy means to swap something of value for something that you value more. You know, we all value money. It's got a value on it. But you know, I also value heat. <laughs> And, and at times, it's really more important for me to be warm than for me to have a dollar bill in my pocket. So I will spend money, I will buy heat from the electrical company so, because it's more important to me. We make these choices all the time. We value money and we trade it in quite often for things that we value more. Well, tonight we're, we're in Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. And the way we started this thing off is we start this off by calling things that are dust, dust. These are things that can't produce life on their own. So in this we acknowledge that in order to have truth in life, in order to, to, to grasp those things, in order to have truth in life in our being, around us, in our lives, we have to be in contact with Jesus as revealed in the Old and New Testament. But this passage, again, is haunting me. It says, buy truth and sell it not. What can we use to buy truth? What can we use to to obtain Christ? Well, you know, another word that we hear associated with Lent is the word fasting. And I don't know about you, but growing up, it was fasting chocolate or or you fasted licorice, which you really didn't like anyway, or, or, or spinach, or, you know, I'm going to fast spinach this, this Lent. Mom and Dad, don't try it, okay? You know, it's spiritual. I'm just letting you know. Don't try to force it on me or else you will hurt my conscience and stand between me and the Lord. <laughs> you know? So fasting has become about this giving up something. And, and in a way, this kind of gets confused would buy an off God in some manner of speaking. I remember when I was a kid, my mom told me about fasting and praying so that she could have a baby. And, uh, and anyway, I'm here. <laughs> and I, you know, I got in my mind that fasting is praying is some way to buy off God, but this is not where I'm going with this. In Lent, fasting's common. It's giving up something for Lent uh, it's, it's a long-running tradition, but this year I want to suggest that we not give up something for Lent. I'm going to suggest that we buy something. Trading something that we value for something that we value more. Now, we all have dust that we chase. We all do. We all have things in our lives that we think that that 
it's what gives us life. It's our truth. It is what makes us want to get up in the morning. It's the things that we run to when things are stressful. It's the things that we run to when we get afraid. It's, it's, it's our life. It's what we hold on to. It may be where we get our significance, where we get our sense of self-esteem. We all have dust that we chase to get truth and life. But we just discussed that, that that dust is just that. In this world, uh, there's a scripture that says, in, um, it's in, Solomon said it, he said, under the sun, it's vanity, vanity, all is vanity. You can rephrase that by saying, under the sun, it's all dust. So what I'm suggesting uh, tonight is that this year, I want us to ask ourselves, to think about what we pursue in our lives for truth and meaning. And instead of giving up something for life, for, for Lent, we trade in and trade up. We trade in and trade up. You know, some of us have, have been uh, trying to stay up with current events and, and somehow that makes us feel safe. It may be that we want to turn the television off and instead of consulting Fox News or CNN for our sense of peace, maybe in that time we want to trade in and trade up and look at Scripture, spend some time in the Word, spend some time with God. It may be that some of us, like me, uh, find their sense of peace in a bowl of Briar's ice cream about 10.30 at night. Maybe we want to trade up and trade in and instead of getting the spoon, we get on our knees. Some of us just like to veg out in front of the TV set. Some of us want to get a bottle of wine. Oh, I know I'm going to meddling. Whatever it is that you're chasing for life, whatever it is that you're chasing for truth, wherever it is you're getting your, 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 your medication for the pains of life, what if for Lent, we don't give up anything, we trade up by truth, what do you buy it with? Dust. Dust. Take whatever brand of dust that you've got and trade it for a time of chasing Jesus in prayer, in scripture, in godly fellowship. Or responding to him. I know you've all heard this story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> there was a man that fell off a cliff. He fell off a cliff and, and he found himself dangling by a branch. And all of a sudden, he got religious. And he, he yelled, he said, God, if you're up there, save me. He didn't hear anything. He said, God, if you're up there, save me. I'll do anything. And he heard a voice say, let go of the branch. And the man said, is there anybody else up there? What it means to let go of something that doesn't bring life. To grab hold of something that does. This is buying the truth. This is buying the truth. This is what Lent's all about. This is what repentance is. And, and, and I know that that's a, a really kind of religious word, repentance. But re repentance is just saying, hey, listen, I've been getting it all wrong. I've been trying to get my life and my truth from somewhere else. During this 40 days, let's make a conscious effort to take a step toward God. And to get our, our life and truth from Him. And the times that we're stressful and the times that, that we're freaking out and the times that the pressure's on, that's the times where we really are going to find out where our favorite dust is. And it's in those times that we can draw near to Him. And now the Bible says this. The Bible says if we'll draw near to Him, He'll draw near to us. I'm just going to tell you that if we, if we get this down this next 40 days, if we start taking steps in, in that direction these next 40 days, when Easter comes around, <laughs> it's 
it'll be a good time. So Lent, Ash Wednesday, it's about buying truth. It's an opportunity to get our rhetoric and our lives in line with one another.